Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryan here. In today's CCNA and CCNP 5-Minute Video Boot Camp, we're going to cover an often overlooked topic in OSPF, but this is something you've got to have down for your studies because I can almost guarantee it's going to rear its head on your CCNA and CCNP route exam in some fashion, and that's knowing the OSPF router types. And we're not only going to quickly go over the router types, because knowing the rules here is what it's all about, but we're also going to practice looking at a diagram and identifying the, diff the different router types. And I also have a live demo for you with a certain OSPF command that I think you'll find very helpful for this as well. So let's go ahead and hit that clock. I want to talk just for a moment about why this tends to get overlooked. Because when you hit OSPF, especially in your CCNA studies, and you maybe haven't seen it before, it's just like a, a cold bath. Because you go through static routing, and nothing real complicated about it. You know, the IP route command's got a few options we got to know, but that's about it. RIP, we know we got to know the differences between the two versions, how they operate, but still, we're just talking a couple of commands there. EIGRP, uh, you know, certainly a little more complex. We got wildcard mass, we got autonomous systems, we got neighbor relationships, but again, not terribly complicated, especially after you work with it for a little while. But OSPF, I mean, you hit that and it's just a ton of theory at first, right? Because you got the link state protocol theory, you got the LSA types, you got the network types, you got the router types, you got the special considerations for hub and spoke networks. Uh, there's just a whole lot of stuff before you even get to start configuring it. So what I have found over the years of teaching this is that the simpler stuff tends to get overlooked. Or frankly, especially if you're an in-person class and you're tired anyway, it's like, oh man, we just went over OSPF for three hours. You know, your brain gets fried. I've been there. I've been on both sides of that uh, that podium. I know what that's like. That's why I actually prefer myself, you know, DVDs or on-demand courses because you can watch them again because it's really hard to absorb all that the first time. So let's go over this information and then see it live on a Cisco router, Cisco routers actually. This is the theory and there's nothing complex here. It's certainly easier than remembering all the LSA types and that kind of thing, but we got to know this cold. An OSPF internal router has all its interfaces in the same area. A backbone router has at least one interface in area 0. An area border router has at least one interface in area 0 and at least one interface in another area. And then finally, the autonomous system border router or boundary router, which is what I think we'll see on the live equipment, uh, it's an OSPF router performing route redistribution. That's it. You know, like I said, certainly easier than LSAs and hub and spoke networks. The rules are not complicated but people tend to overlook those. So that's why I want to walk through this diagram with you for a minute and then show you a command or two out on the live Cisco equipment that'll help you out with this as well. It's good exam stuff. So let us take a peek at this diagram. This is from my CCNP route study guide. And you can see that router one is running RIP version two and OSPF. And I, d I have already configured route redistribution there. Routers 1, 2, and 3 are also on a hub and spoke network you see in area 0. Routers 2 and 3 have loopbacks in areas 2 and 3 respectively. Router 1 also has a loopback. And Router 4 is sitting down here. Area 34 is the only interface, excuse me, only area it has an interface in. So which one of these, if any, are internal routers? And I can't stop too long because five minute limit. <laughs> Might go over a little bit. Let's see, the internal routers, air, router 4, that's it. It has an interface in one area and one area only, and that's it. And again, the definition there, all interfaces in the same area. So if we went back and added a loop back and put it in, say, area 4, it would no longer be an internal router. So how about this backbone router? At least one interface in area 0, and you can see that when you have those rules down cold, this part is easy because routers 1, 2, and 3 are your backbone routers. They have interfaces in area 0. Now area border router, that has at least one interface in area 0 and at least one interface in another area. So can routers 1, 2, and 3, which seem to fit that rule, can they be backbone routers and area border routers? Yes, they can. And that's really the key here is to remember that these routers can fill more than one of these roles. 
And then finally in ASBR, we know which one that is. That's going to be router 1 because that's where I said a moment ago, that's where our route redistribution was taking place. Now let me bring up the live equipment because I want to show you one really helpful command for this. And it's show IP OSPF. A lot of good troubleshooting information here. You know, you can see how many times the SPF algorithm's been executed. And if you see that continue to increment, you know, you may have an issue out there. But here's what we're really looking for right now. It is an area border and autonomous system boundary router. So this is an ABR and an ASBR. Let's go down to router 2. And I'm going to go ahead and stop the clock because we're right at the five minute limit. And I, neither you or I want to hear that alarm, believe me. And let's go ahead and run show IP OSPF here. And you can see it is an area border router. So this command will tell you whether a router is or is not an ABR and or an ASBR. It will not mention the other two particular router types, internal and backbone. We just need to be able to look at the map, look at the diagram and say, okay, these are internal, these are backbone. But that's a really handy command for the ABR and ASBR. And actually, one more I want to show you there. Show IP OSPF border routers. Always got to remember that hyphen right there. And this is simply identifying the other ABR and ASBRs in this process. So this is a really helpful command. If you're on one particular router, you need to see what that process's border routers are, period, not just if the local router is one, then run show IP OSPF border routers, and it tells you right there what the ID of the router is, of course, the OSPF RID, and then down here, whether it's an ABR, an ASBR, or both. So it went over a five minute limit there a little bit, but I think you'll find that worthwhile. As a matter of fact, I know you will, especially those particular commands. And thanks for joining me today for this five minute boot camp. I'm Chris Bryant. Talk to you soon.